Hello, welcome to the Brand Bravery Podcast. I'm Amy Purdy, the Brand Explorer, and I am here to help inspire you to bravely overcome your challenges on your business journey by hearing how others overcome theirs, pushing forward and taking the next step, whatever that needs to be at the time. It's a brand new adventure for your business journey. This episode is full of brand bravery. Kelly is full of determination. She's got self-belief. We'll cover focusing on strength, setting really big goals. This is a really interesting interview to find out what goes on behind the scenes at Unisys with Kelly Oliver Dougal, who is the founding director. Unisys is a group of companies that provide skills, care and wellbeing services to empower people to reach their potential. So Kelly started this business following a career in the voluntary sector in various different roles but she was always supporting people in some way to improve their lives so after several redundancies and feeling like she wasn't reaching her potential herself she set up Unisys first on her own with supporting people to get into work and then later on incorporating those three areas of skills care and well-being that Unisys now provides and having rebranded following intellectual property issues with the previous name I helped Kelly to launch Unisys and step into her brand bravery so it was really interesting to catch up with her in this episode. So you started Unisys quite a long time ago now. Do you want to tell us what was the the catalyst for that happening? Yeah, so um, my background is in the voluntary sector and I worked for lots of charities, um, but it was always um, on funded projects, which had a finite amount of time that they were funded for. Um, and also I wanted to progress. So I had a lot of jobs <laughs> and I kept being redundant and I got a bit fed up with, of that. So I decided that I would set up on my own and then I would make sure I didn't make myself redundant. And so far it's working. <laughs> yes, it's working very well. Because this, we've worked since, what, is it 2014 when you started? 2013, one of the two. Yeah, so, it was 2014 yeah. when I first started, but it was just me for a few years. And then I th- started to think big um because I was a bit lonely on my own and uh-huh. also um it wasn't a very good business model because I was very good at helping people into work and progressing and there was no repeat business so that wasn't great uh-huh. so yeah so I came up with the um idea of having three sub brands and um doing all the things that I do now so that's skills care and well-being Brilliant. I think it would be really great for people listening to know a bit more about what those three areas are, because they've they've expanded and expanded over time, haven't they? And you do a lot of amazing things to help people now. (laughs) Well, we started off, um, as I said before, um, we I was just helping people into work at first, and then when I started to think about the different brands there's different strands I didn't really know how I was going to achieve what my big aim was um so I just kind of started making steps towards what that would be um so we started delivering funded um employability workshops and then I started to try and build the care service um and there was a few things that happened that didn't quite work which you learn from and then we're kind of launched the care service and now we deliver um 1600 hours a week of care to people to help them stay living independently in their own homes um i won't employ about 70 people so that's a lot bigger than when i started huge (laughs) and then um alongside that we're kind of because we're focusing i was focusing so much on the care i couldn't really um give as much attention to the other things so the skill stuff that we're doing kind of fell away a little bit for a little while um although there was the odd project um but the, the counseling service in under the well-being brand that um that we started a small little project with um one volunteer student on placement um just providing counseling for people who um were sort of couldn't afford to pay for it and we did that with a little bit of grant funding um so that um 
that just ticked along nicely for a little while and then we expanded it and got some more funding and expanded it a bit more and now I'm really focused on trying to make that much more sustainable and a lot bigger so we've now got four students on placement and one waiting to start so we'll have five on placement soon we've got a new member of staff starting so she'll be um working 24 25 hours a week um and we're hoping to well we're not hoping to we're going to <laughs> offer that out to <laughs> businesses for their employees um yeah so that's the plan um but yeah it was it was in the skill side of things um we were approached by Sunderland University um to deliver care training we're already delivering care training to our staff and they asked if we would join the consortium for the northeast uh, workforce skills program so there's lots of different partners involved in that we're one of the smaller ones but it's a huge piece of work for us um and they're supporting our care training so we can offer a bit more of it and help us to to skill up our workers Oh, that's wonderful because that's a really new thing, isn't it? That I wrote that down because it was it was one of the things you just posted about this week. But I yeah. think that's wonderful. But I think also, um, you know, you started this business and you had like loads of experience obviously in the government sector, but you were a carer and then you decided to start this business providing care. I feel like that's quite a brave thing to do. You want to tell yeah, us a bit so about that? So being a carer was one of the jobs that I had, but that wasn't, well, it was working for a charity, but it wasn't quite working on a funded kind of project. It was more commercial, that side of the charity. Um, but yeah, so I did I did care work for a few years and then I changed jobs into employability. So I was helping people into work in that job. And then, um, and helping people to stay in work once they, if they've been off with it, um, it's like a, a health condition. Um, and then I worked in different other various roles. Um, so I decided to bring all that under one roof. Sorry, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that, you know, you started this with, with you'd been a carer, but like to make that decision to start this this care side of Unisys. Yeah, like, yeah so that and, was quite you know, great. It was quite a jump. Yeah, it was. And, and I was kind of inspired by some coaching that I had where like a lot of the people in the, because we're in a group and we all kind of had this mindset that you had to have the skills to be able to do the work. But actually, mm -hmm. you started thinking, well, actually, if you if you hire someone else to do the, that, the work that you're not very good at or you don't know about, then you don't have to stick to your experience and you can sort of branch out. So that's what I decided to do. Um, and I had this wild idea that I was going to set up a care service and I didn't have a clue how and I didn't really realise what was involved. And um, some might say that was brave and I think you would call it brave. Some, call might, it brave. Call it, some might call it really naive. <laughs> and kind of, I think, oh my God, I didn't, I really didn't have a clue. So one of the things that I had to be really, really brave about was finances because I completely misjudged how much it was going to cost. Mm. <laughs> so I had this little loan, really small loan of about £15,000. And I remember going to register with CQC and we got, we had this meeting with CQC and they grilled me for three hours <laughs> about how we're going to wow. set this up and everything. Um, I don't think they usually last that long, but this particular woman was... Um, she was quite diligent to put it like that and um, I was like okay so you've got this £15,000 and then what and I was like well what do you mean that's like loads of money <laughs> but in actual fact it cost about a quarter of a million pounds to set up like wow. £200,000 so it was a lot more than I realised and so for a point we had these huge overheads and we just didn't have enough money coming in so I was we're in quite a lot of um, high risk debt at one point, which terrified my husband. Now I'm the kind of person who likes to juggle things and um, kind of find solutions. So although I wasn't totally comfortable with that, I was more used to it. Whereas my husband, he, he likes to save up before you mm -hmm. buy things. 
So he's really careful with money. And so our sort of values clashed a little bit during that time. And yeah, I can't say that I was relaxed about it. I absolutely wasn't. I was really worried. I put a lot of effort into trying to secure the finances that were needed to be able to carry on. Um, and I managed it. <laughs> when I look back, I think, how on earth did I do that? That was how on earth did you do that, Kelly? Yeah. I'd, and, and because um, my husband was so worried about it, I ended up supporting him emotionally through that as well as myself. So that was um, really, really hard. But I think one of the things that I can take from that is that I just knew, I knew in me gut that I had a really good thing and I wasn't prepared to give it up. I knew if we could just get to the point where we were, you know, breaking even, then we would be able to survive and thrive and would be able to create this fantastic thing that could help lots of people. And so that's what I did. I was just determined. I was just like, no, I'm not giving up. We can't give up now. If we give up now, we'll end up being in an even worse position. You know, we'll be in loads of debt yeah. that we haven't got a vehicle to pay it off with. And we'll be, you know what I mean? So I just had mm. to keep going. Um which was really frightening for Ian, and my husband. Um, it must have been. But it does say a lot, doesn't it, as well, about trust in things going the way that you think they're going to go. And, like, I think, did you say something about trust and you've got feeling and it's, like, knowing um, and, like, that and sort I, of inner knowing that something is going to work out. That's really important that I think as business owners uh, we kind of have to have, don't we? Yeah, and I just had a belief in myself and my own ability to sort things out because I've been through some rough times before um, and I just knew that at some point it would just become clear and it would be um, it would be okay. And actually what happened was that lockdown happened. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, we um, secured a very big care package which really just made a massive difference and we could kind of refinance because of the, um, you know, the bounce back loans and stuff. So that saved us as well, really. So it was timing, yeah. bit of luck, but just determination. But yeah, when I look back, I think, how on earth did I do that? What on earth was I thinking? And quite frankly, I never want to go through that, that again, but I am glad I stuck at it because I think I would have regretted it if I hadn't. Yeah, you've you've created this amazing business now and to have come through those trials and then and there's other things as well that we haven't talked about that that you know that to get to this point you must look back and feel so proud. And I think that's amazing. just it's wonderful. Yeah. And every time I speak to you, you've done something else. <laughs> and I'll say, Oh hi Colleen, yeah. like, oh I've just employed somebody else, I've just employed five other people or whatever. And of course Ian came and worked with you as well, didn't you? And I want to talk about that because I think working with your yeah. husband must be quite okay. challenging how how does that how, how easy was that to do not very easy but one of the things that I say all the time is what have I done but depending on what's happening I say it differently so like oh, what have I done yes or oh my god what have I done you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah um bringing Ian in he he had a few um instances at work as well where he wasn't happy and I just said, why are you doing that? You could, you know, you could put that energy into the business and it would make it so much like, you know, it would it would grow the business quicker with your energy and input and um, skills. So I managed to persuade him eventually and he came on board probably at the wrong time because it was just before <laughs> all of this stuff happened financially. So we were both dependent our, both of our incomes were dependent on the business and um then yes I got us into that mess <laughs> which and it was a bit of a mess for a while but managed to get us out as well um so that was quite worrying especially for him who was who's more careful and likes to save up and <laughs> stuff like that well, that feels like yeah. a really good sort of partnership of like being prepared to go and take risks and someone who's sort of going to like pull you back a little bit but still yeah. let you go so that you're going to have that like in between 
perfect yeah. collision. <laughs> yeah. so, but my me and Ian have always had a bit of a relationship where we're big and we're sometimes a bit more like brother and sister than husband and wife. We're like big guy even when we agree and then we don't realise that we're, we actually agree with each other and we're actually arguing over some tiny little part of whatever we're arguing over. And then we're, over the years, we've kind of come to realise that that's actually, we actually agree. And so we'll argue less now. But in the business, we find it really difficult to do the same task together. So it's mm. fine like if we're interviewing together because we're kind of just take on roles. But if we have to actually visit, like talk to each other and um, resolve something or do a task together, then we we'll just clash. And I've just learned that that's not the best use of um, of each other, like each other's skills. Yeah. And um, if I need someone to help me in that way, I'll think about doing it another way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um. Ian's kind of taken a bit of a different role to what we were expecting at the beginning. Uh, well, what, what I was expecting, but what has actually happened is like, he comes in, like, I'm here all the time. It's my baby. I push it forward. I make it happen. And um, he comes in and he's here, like usually on a Monday and Tuesday, and then a bit extra if there's something going on. But as a routine, he comes in on a Monday and Tuesday, whether there's stuff to do, for him or not <laughs> and then comes in when he's really needed and usually gets dragged into things like um talking um to staff over like you know disciplinaries and you know what's gonna mm. happen because um I'm good at making things happen and pushing the business forward whereas I'm not always the best person to communicate things with other people so I tend to just come out with stuff and blurt it out however it lands um which <laughs> isn't always the best way whereas Ian can he's got the skill where he can see what's going to motivate someone to get them on our side and sort of push their buttons if you know what I mean so he's got this talent for seeing what's beneficial for both sides and then emphasizing that to encourage people to do um to to move forward together so that's really his skill so we bring him in for stuff like that so I'll go oh this is what I want to happen can you suggest how we will make it happen and he'll come up with an idea and a way of wording it which is his skill so that's good <laughs> that's great I love that you've 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 highlighted an awful lot of your well his strengths as well but your strengths too in there yeah. and I think one of the things that I know you do do a lot of is you're always developing new skills aren't you you're always doing training you're always learning and like yeah. That obviously I think because of what you do is, is quite key anyway, but it's it's the business skills as well as the the mm -hmm. skills you need to do the care and the skills and the well-being, isn't it? And I think yeah. continuing to do those things, even when you must know quite a lot already, it's it's um it, it's amazing. So what, what have you enjoyed learning like the most? Yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm ever done. I always think, well, mm. somebody like I can learn something new. Um yeah, and, I agree. Yeah. Whereas Ian, Ian isn't as focused in the same way as me. So he's actually, the other side of what he's actually doing, because it sounds like he doesn't really do very much because <laughs> he's only here part time. But actually what he's done is he's took over um, looking after the house and feeding us and stuff like that, which is really mm. good. I don't have to think about that. Because he's, he, he's more, he enjoys cooking and um just making sure everything's working at home so that that's great because I don't have to think about it anymore so yes you often take photographs <laughs> so don't you of your that. dining table with your food on it <laughs> <laughs> yes I've stopped doing that because that's what people like I used to post a breakfast picture every Sunday and then when I saw people they'd be like oh you're full English and I was like this is really getting embarrassing that's all I'm known for I'm gonna stop doing that <laughs> so yeah but sorry about but I think, I think it was <laughs> No, during lockdowns, um, that that was the, one of the only things that it was the highlight of the time, wasn't it? Food. Mm, <laughs> so yeah, it certainly it was. Lockdowns, yeah, I'm kind of sick. I like. I don't do it as much now. So I wanted to talk about obviously the time when we started working together on the Unisys brand because before being called Unisys you were called something else I don't know if you're allowed to say what it was or if you want to say what it was yeah. not important but um you obviously <laughs> you had to rebrand because there were some IP issues do you want to share a bit about that time 
Yeah, so that was really hard because I think I had already I had the idea to have the three sub brands. So I had mm. those sub brands already. So I'd done a brand refresh with the sub brands with you, I think. So yeah. Signet East, and then when we started to launch the care side of things, um, along came another company called Signet who, um, had the same name and were obviously they were following on on social media and the name kept coming up and I was thinking hmm do you know what there's something not right here I need to go and check um and I thought uh, first, like I knew about them and for ages I just thought oh it'll be all right it'll be all right but then you know when they started following us on social media and stuff I started thinking mm, maybe this isn't okay maybe I need to go get some advice so I did and uh it was, I remember it was the last day before Christmas and I went to the IP centre in Newcastle yeah. um, for a meeting and they said, well, you can use the brand for um, the skills and wellbeing, but you can't use it for care because it's the signet bit part of it that's important and that's the bit that's clashing with this other company. So I was um, devastated, to be honest. I was like, oh yeah, my God. the day before Christmas too. Well, it wasn't a day before Christmas. It was a day like it was the last day of work, and so it was like mm. maybe it's Friday the nineteenth or something like yeah. that. And I just remember being so devastated because you know I had this whole thing about signets and um the the sort of baby swan, you know, the ugly duckling. Yeah, and... you'd built it up beautifully with the whole story yeah. around it. Yeah, oh, it was, and some people said, "Oh well, it, what it means to me is when you're like you know when you see the swans." like just on the water but underneath they're like paddling like this and nobody can see that's me and that that's what people would say to me um so I really loved that brand but then I had to come up with a new name and it took me a long time and um yeah. you know, asking other people you are involved in trying to help um come up with something and we had loads of ideas and um settled on Unisys at the in the end which is a unicorn and a pegasus cross is the is the unisus so that is the horned um you so a unicorn but crossed with a pegasus which is a horse with wings and the unicorn's the horse with a horn um so that's what a unisus is but most people just call them unicorns because they don't realize that they've got another name and there yeah. are some other names that you can call the same thing such as um pegacorn and um can't remember the other names but they're not as good so no that sounds on... a bit my little pony doesn't it unisys sounds serious yeah. <laughs> yeah well and this is the thing so it sounds quite in a way corporate which is kind of me in a way so I, i've got a community background but actually we want to be commercial as well we don't mm -hmm. want to be a charity but we want to we want to do we want to do good things and want to help people but at the same time we don't want to be charity so it's kind of in between that social enterprise sort of values and um it reminded me of when I was growing up with um I don't know if you remember He-Man and She-Ra I, 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 I didn't really watch those <laughs> yeah, so that was a cartoon that was on and that was a there was a unisys on that mm -hmm. and um My Little Pony does have a unisys on it as well <laughs> Um, it? so it's quite playful but then it mm. doesn't sound like it is so that's one of the reasons and nobody had um heard of that word before so it was mm. um you know like you know some of the like big brands they don't have anything to do with what they do in the name like mm. Tesco and Asda you God knows where that comes from. Do you know what I mean? You'd have yeah, to look well, it up. associated dairies, and it's just pinched the first ones. I don't know about this. I, I think Tesco but, is yeah. something to do with the people who started it and the two names mm -hmm. mushed together. Um, really? But anyway, yeah. they, they have like random names, don't they? So that's kind of it's yeah, it yeah. can be meaningless, but it can mean something as well. And I kind of thought it was quite magical as well with the Unisys. It's yeah, not really definitely. Real creature and when I was looking for names I was thinking about the evolution of the signet and the swan and that sort of thing because we like to that the strap line of the companies empowering people to reach their potential and that goes for clients as well as staff and one of the things that one of the reasons is because I didn't feel like I 
reached my potential when I was an employee. So um, I certainly had a lot more opportunity to try new things and take risks. <laughs> um, yeah. As since I started in business, so I think I'm reaching my potential now. Um, yeah, so it was that um we're looking for that sort of theme and so we thought think and flourish or thrive or but none of them quite worked but the unisys it just stuck and yeah so yeah. I did have someone ring up once and go unisys who named that and I was like well actually it was me and they were absolutely mortified <laughs> <laughs> well one I'm person really however, however many you've reached I think that's okay <laughs> I'm, I'm quite proud of it so I, I wasn't really offended mm. it's not going to be appeal to everybody and that's okay do you know what I mean as long as yeah. I'm feeling proud of it and feeling brave because of it then I think that's the important thing yeah and naming is so hard isn't it I've had loads of conversations just this week about naming businesses and it's just it's such a challenge it takes ages to come up with a good name doesn't it because you have to be sure you like it and especially yeah. when you had one that you really liked to have to swap over to something else, yeah. it's just yeah. it's just devastating, really. I felt awful and for you. Sure. And to make sure you don't have something the same as someone else again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You've got to do all your due, due, I can't say it, due diligence. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so we've trademarked the um, brand. So just mm. in case that issue comes up for us. So yeah. yeah. Well, it won't now. It might come up for somebody else, though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what yeah. I mean. So yeah, but they, they need to do their diligence and yeah. check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they start a business, it's so it's so important. Um, well worth doing, but obviously you need to protect yourself against things happening in the future with things that don't exist yet. So that's great mm -hmm. that you've done that. So. I have really enjoyed talking to you and I feel like we could go on for another half an hour easily, but, but I can't. <laughs> so you were going to share a tip with us, which and I know you told me what it was at the beginning. And I think it really, you've, you've alluded to it all the way through. It's clearly yeah. a really good one. So do you want to tell us what that is? Yeah, it's just to, to whatever you think that you can do in business, just try think bigger, because I think that's what I did when I first started. I thought, I thought about what I could do and uh, I was small. I made myself small, but actually when I started thinking bigger and what was possible and what I could achieve, you know, you even if you don't get to that big overarching goal, you've still got higher and more success than what you would have done if you just mm. started off with a really small goal. So a big, massive goal and a big vision of where you, what you want the business to look like when it's finished. And um, I've actually more than achieved my original vision because um, I think I set out to have 50 staff. And uh -huh. I've now got 70. The care service is sort of flourishing and uh, still growing. Um, and the other two parts of the business are still quite small, compared to where I want them to be so the aim now is to get those as um as established as the as the care um but yeah if you have a small goal you and you don't hit it then you're not going to achieve very much whereas if you have a massive mm -hmm. goal you'll get higher than where you would have gone before so just think big just think big and um but don't underestimate your finances because that's really stressful and mm -hmm. I really wouldn't recommend that for anybody um yeah I wish I'd kind of um had an inkling about how much it was going to cost but it's where do yeah. you go to get that information so yeah but no regrets now because look what you've done <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah no, that reminds me of the, there is a, a phrase isn't there if um shoot for the moon and even if you miss you'll land amongst the stars which was on a card my parents gave yeah. me when I started my business I had it on my shelf for ages and it's uh that's that's what you've done and but you're, you're very very close to the moon <laughs> a little bit more to do it's funny because I was going to ask you what next at the oh, end. I I'm sorry <laughs> I, I missed that I was going to say I, sometimes I fall by the moon when I think about what I've achieved and other times I just think oh no well well I haven't achieved it because everybody else has done it if it wasn't for the other like me staff I couldn't mm. have done what I've done so yeah um but I think Ian reminds me a lot that it's because of me because 
if it wasn't for me, none of that would exist. But I still have to give credit to the other people who helped me. Yeah, absolutely. You're empowering them all to reach their potential, aren't you? Just like those chap line says, living it. <laughs> I love that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Brand Bravery podcast. Check out the show notes for all the links and information you need, including links to my social media and my website, so you can let me know what you thought of this episode. Please share with anyone else who you think would enjoy this. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next episode.